year and counting, Richard Skipper has been celebrating the artists you love. Richard Skipper is all about celebrating life, art, and his guest body of work. Please join us while he showcases these diverse and talented individuals. Here's Richard Skipper. Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to Richard Skipper's Friday Wrap-Up Show. We're wrapping up the week. We're wrapping up October. Can you believe it? This is the last Friday of October. Halloween is just around the corner. Today is also, uh, well, it's Elsa Lanchester's birthday. It's National Frankenstein Day. And I want to talk a little bit about monsters. Uh, I've encountered my own monsters today. I did a post on my Facebook page today. By the way, uh, thank you all for being here today. We are only uh, broadcasting today exclusively uh, through my YouTube channel, RichardSkipperCelebrates.com. So thank you all for being here. And you have to be a subscriber in order to leave a comment today. So i just trying to direct traffic there. But I posted something earlier today about something that really got to me and it got a lot of response. And I want to address for those of you who are here, what happened and my response to this. And we're gonna talk about it on today's show. I have three amazing artists that are waiting in the wings and we're going to celebrate their body of worth. And we're gonna talk not only about this, but I also wanna talk about the Twitter controversy and we're gonna talk about Leslie Jordan and Jerry Lee Lewis and a lot of things that have been happening this week. So we can put it all together uh, and wrap it up in hopefully a nice little bow. Uh, but uh, I had a guest booked on my show tomorrow, and I am going to take full responsibility. I should have vetted the guest. Uh, for some strange reason, based on the way that I saw that this guest uh, was promoting himself, uh, I was getting a deep pit in the bottom of my solar plexus. And it just, every time I thought about tomorrow's show, uh, I just got a very uneasy feeling. Um, and now this is going to sound very woo-woo. I know it is. Uh, and this may turn off some of you, and it may excite some of you. But this week is a new moon. And with the new moon comes a lot of very uh, unusual things going on in the world. But this particular new moon, I am letting go of a lot of things in my life. and. Today, this, uh, well, this guest, I was having these second thoughts about having this person on the show tomorrow. And then I really began to really dig deep today. And uh, this person is not in alignment with my core beliefs uh, on many levels, uh, not only uh, politically, but in terms of uh, the way that he presents himself to the world. That's not to say that I'm better than he is or that I'm less than he is, that he is less than I am. We are just two different people. And I don't think that he is in alignment with my values. I am definitely not in alignment with his values. So I made a choice to cancel the show for tomorrow. And I reached out to his publicist and uh, I just said simply that I had made a decision to cancel the show. The publicist reached out to me and asked why I was canceling the show. And I chose to be uh, honest. And when I told him that we were just not in alignment politically, uh, the publicist really went off on me and said, does this mean that every time one of my clients disagrees with you politically, that you are going to choose not to have this person on your show. I have to say that this is no longer, for me, about Republican versus Democrat. When I think of the former president of the United States, I am thinking of a person who went into the White House from day one saying, even if I lose, I will say that I won that there was a rigged election, that everything was wrong. And I think about my life. I think about every audition that I've gone to, everything that I've gone after in life. 
I don't always get what I want. Should I just put it out to the world that I still got that cast in that show? Should I put on my resume that every show that I auditioned for that I got? What lessons are we putting out to the world right now? Right now, as we are 11, 12 days away from our next election, there are 299 election deniers who are running for office, who are in total denial with the election. This frightens the hell out of me. And I know that we're not supposed to get political and everything, and I may turn a lot of people off by speaking honestly about what I'm feeling right now. But this is giving me a very uneasy feeling about honesty and about trustworthiness and about how we go through life. And when we align ourselves with people based on lies and based on the fact that people are bullies and feel that they want uh, one upmanship and everything, I cannot align myself with that. So I made a choice not to have a guest on my show tomorrow because it is not in alignment with my core values. And uh, that's where I am. I stand with this. I was honest about that. Uh, rather than saying, I respect your decision not to have this. The publicist got very angry with me and uh, essentially uh, yelled at me on the phone today, hung up on me, sent me a couple of emails since then. I stand behind my decision. Uh, if he, I hope, will see this program. He says he has not even seen any of my other shows, uh, except for those that his client is on. Uh, as a publicist, uh, he never vetted me uh, before bringing his clients on my show. Uh, but once again, that's what happened today. I stand behind what I did. And now I'm gonna reach out uh, to one of uh, you, uh, Pam Stubbs, uh, you are one of our guests uh, waiting in the wings today. Uh, I want you to pick one of our guests to bring on. So pick a number, one through three. We will bring our first guest on. It's like, let's make a deal. You never know who's waiting in the wings. Uh, I love all three of these uh, guests. Two of them uh, have birthdays this week. One of them has a client who is actually... Uh, performing this week. Another one just had a very successful show at Don't Tell Mamas, and she's going to be back at Don't Tell Mamas on Sunday. And uh, it just so happens she's behind door number three, and she's the one who's be coming on first. Leslie, are you ready? I'm bringing you on. Leslie or Aquino. So, Leslie, Leslie, Leslie. Um, so you heard my opening monologue. Do you want to add to what I just said? Oh, gosh, Richard. It's Well, I am um, very proud of you. I mean, that took enormous strength to do that. And I mean, Tom and I both heard that story because I called you immediately because I love you. And if anything ever upsets you, I want to be there to, to help you calm down or be supportive. And I thought that took enormous guts to do that. Um, as far as, you know, you had that intuition right away. You sort of had that. Yeah. Feeling. I mean, I had this gut feeling that this person was not the right person for my show. Mm -hmm. And again, I want to say with all due respect, in case he sees the show, mm -hmm. uh, this is not a reflection. I, there's an audience for him. Right. There's a huge audience for him. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain venues that I have never been asked to perform in. You and I have had these conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean, mean that I am less than. It just means that I'm not right for certain venues. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just know where I'm going to be booked and where I'm not going to be booked. But let's talk about you. Uh, you have a show you just did this past sun, uh, Sunday, uh, last Saturday, actually, at Don't Tell Mama. Uh, tell us about your show. Well, it's called uh, Laughing at Life, and here's a little card <laughs> that we're that I have uh, about it. But it's, um, I think I was inspired, uh, 
you know, I have been in cabaret for like 25, 30 years. I've sung at the Oak Room at the Algonquin on and off for five and every club in New York up to Silverado Country Club in, in California. So I've done quite a bit of cabaret. And, um, but of course, like so many artists, uh, I stepped away from it with COVID because of my husband's health and I had six little grandchildren that I didn't want to, you know, infect or nor myself. Right, of course. So, um, but I tell you, Joni Mitchell, I saw her, I think we've talked about this at the Newport Jazz Festival. And uh, she had to be helped. You saw that, Richard, remember that? She had to be helped into her chair because she suffered, uh, I believe, in, what was it, a brain aneurysm or something a couple of years ago. And it was hard for her to walk. But she sat down and started singing Both Sides Now, which she wrote. And the experience of her life just came right out of her soul. And she blew my socks off and every thousands of people that were there. And I thought, my gosh, that's so inspiring. I have to find the courage to go back to, to reaffirm life. And, um, and I figured, you know, I still can sing, why not? So I, I put together this show, um, Laughing at Life, which is a foot stomping, life affirming journey of love and it's got songs of artists that i love alberta hunter the chicago blues singer um uh so fats waller uh dylan it's all over the place it's got a lot of different sounds rogers and hart um lots of beautiful music um but i wrap it within my life my experiences and try and make it universal and um, I just, I'm really enjoying this. And now I've just heard I'm going to be doing a couple more, I believe, up here in Connecticut. You're going to be doing a what? I'm sorry? Some more up here in Connecticut. Um, oh, that's great. Now, I just you heard uh, about that today. Uh, you are uh, going to be on Sunday at what time? Four o'clock. I'm going to try to be there. You're there. I, I hope I'll see you there. Because I, I want you to see this one. I definitely want to be there. Each time that I've been in the audience of your show uh, has been a phenomenal experience. Well, you're and, a phenomenal audience. Well, <laughs> well I love you. You know, it's funny. I mean, years ago, I was in uh, San Francisco watching Shara McKnight, and she made a comment on stage. She said, it takes a lot to be a great audience, a, a great performer. It also takes a lot to be a great uh, audience. Yeah. And I really am invested when I'm in the audience. Oh, uh, you so are, 100%. Julie really Wilson used to be like that. You uh, were uh, literally uh, engulfed by Julie Wilson in your show uh will she still be engulfing you this sunday yes and what's interesting is the opening after i was a little scared but you know what i do i'll tell you it's, it's a secret before i i was really scared but before i go on i usually for years and years my dad was a wonderful singer he was classically trained he sang at carnegie hall he was unbelievable but um i pretend that his hand is in my left hand and julie wilson who is my dear friend is, is in my right she was the godmother of all of us singers out there she was so kind and i hear julie's voice in my head saying okay kids now let's go out there and have fun so both my dad and Julie Wilson are with me on that stage. And I'm telling you, they're there. And I had, believe it or not, um, a dear friend, Deborah Lynn, brought oh, in yeah. Julie Wilson's boa. And it, I enveloped not only her spiritually, but her real boa. And I do a particular song of Julie's that she loved of Cole Porter's and love performing, the laziest gal in town. And uh, we love that, it's so much fun. 
Well, I want to bring on our next guest, but before we bring on our next guest, you get to pull a surprise question for yourself. So you pull a number one through three, and it's a surprise question. Okay. Um, three. Okay. And it's called percentages. So it's a daily act of kindness, actually. Um, envision what abundance feels like for you. Uh, start a new habit that will welcome abundance into your life. You practice abundance, don't you, Leslie? Well, abundance, yes, I do. I do. In other words, your your blessings, correct? Yes. What does abundance mean to you in both your personal life and in your career? Um, my family. Uh, they are the, the jewels in my crown of life. My husband, my grandchildren, my children. Okay, and we're gonna add to this abundance. You get to pull the number one through two, and we're gonna pull up the next guest. Two. And that is James Beeman. <laughs> happy, happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you. So I'm 29 again, isn't that amazing? I'm 39. Every... <laughs> That's a good year too. I never. I am not trying to be a pirate. You have to explain, Richard, why I'm, I'm wearing a big hat. James Beeman, first of all, was on this show last year on his birthday, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I reached out on his birthday and asked if he'd come today, and he said yes. Happy um, birthday, James! Is wearing a bandana because today is National Bandana Day, and this is in recognition of people who are living with cancer. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for wearing the bandana, Jamie. Uh, it's a so pleasure. Thank you for wearing this today. Now, uh, you are, let's talk about what you're doing right now. I know that you're directing um, Goldie DeVere, who was on the show yes. last Friday. Um, and we are also, if if uh, for our giveaway today, if you're in New York and are able to attend, we're going to give away two tickets for the show. Uh, but they have to, uh, there's still the, uh, the two drink minimum. Uh, but if you're not able to attend, uh, we'll come up with an, an alternate gift uh, for that. So um, tell us about the show that you're directing. And you are an amazing entertainer and an amazing actor. What do you get out of directing? Oh, well, uh, in Cabaret, it's just such a luxury to work creatively on something and, and really like contribute to something and, and experience all of the, the wonderful satisfaction of that without spending my own money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cabaret is lovely, but it's an expensive mm -hmm. hobby. Um, so that's nice. Uh, you know, I grew up with theater educators. My dad was a teacher for 30 years of set design and scenic art. And my mom was a teacher and mentor and a coach. And um, the best thing about being a, a director and a coach, especially for solo performers, is that you see something in them that they either don't see in themselves or that they that they feel might be there, but something has to bring it out of them. And um, it is the most magical thing when that light bulb goes, goes or you suggest a piece of material that you know is going to be right. And they're like, mm, and then it just, it becomes this blossoming, you know, a blossoming uh, being the operative word with Alexandra D'Souza, whose show Late Bloomer uh, just finished a sold out run at Delta Mama. And she's an example of one of these really humble, you had her on your show, really yeah. humble, lovely, simple, like open person, very modest with this glorious spirit, glorious voice. Um, and by the end of, of her little run there with this packed house, she was just standing in her, like, her, her glory. You know, she sang, be a lion for her finale. And she's like, I'm a lion. And you're like, yes, you are. <laughs> so I don't know. I love seeing people shine and, and be the thing that they thought they might be, but were afraid to be or, or become the thing that they never dreamed of. And, and I get to be a part of that. So I'm directing two shows simultaneously right now. Uh, Goldie's show, Goldie DeVere and I have been friends since 1998 when we sold cosmetics at Henry Bendel. Uh, uh, and uh, I've directed a bunch of her solo shows and her comeback show in 2019. Um, and this is, a, is fancy. 
It's uh, she's been spent. She spent most of COVID in the uh, studio recording her first album, mm-hmm. and it is glorious. And um, she is doing a pre-release party at Lori Beachman with a five piece band with Michael Roberts as her music director and Carolyn Montgomery as her guest, who's going to come and preview her next show and do a fabulous duet with Goldie that I cannot give away. It just has to be seen to be believed. These two pros just kind of uh, killing it. Uh, and that's a, uh, that's on November 6th. It's one night only. There's going to be all kinds of surprises. And the other two shows, uh, 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 that's her show. And the other show is Becca Kidwell, Becca Kidwell, this just this pure spirit, super, super bright, incredibly ambitious. And it's her show of dares, too. So her friends and colleagues uh, assigned her songs to do that they thought would stretch her. And the theme is empowerment. So she's she's out there living her truth uh, at a new level of, of, of living her truth. And I just get to be part of that. Go, grasshopper. <laughs> and what about yourself on stage again? Well, um, that remains to be seen. I, I did my first show after 29 months of no shows uh, up in Massachusetts over the summer. I did the Buddy Holly story up at North Shore Music Theater. Uh, and there's nothing on the horizon just yet. But the good news we got today from Actors' Equity they're phasing out self-tape auditions. Oh, thank God. Yes, which really is not the best. But you've been very vocal about that. So thank God for that. Yeah, so by by the end of December, by the beginning of the new year, that'll be phased out. And and they're starting up ECCs and EPAs, which are the the group calls at Equity. Uh, And that means that you get to do a live audition for a live theater project, which is what it should be. So maybe something will come of that. I'm not my best in my living room with nobody to ham it up for. So maybe oh. maybe the tide will turn. <laughs> well, good for you. So you, I'm gonna. You get to pull a question, one or two. Ah, uh, two. Okay, and it's actually uh, it's it's called an impact card, and it says choose a new habit and take it on for the next thirty days. Is there something that you've been procrastinating on that you would like to take on? Uh, well, I used to be an exercise fiend and I was a Pilates teacher and my ex was a ballet dancer and we were this fitness couple. Uh, and over COVID things got a little, not <laughs> that. <laughs> so yeah, I need to do, I need to do at least a half an hour of exercise every day. I'll take that on. Yeah. So will you come back on here 30 days from today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Ziggy, uh, what is 30 days from today? Let me Ziggy, get up the count. 30 days from today. We'll figure out. Uh, and I'm okay, I'm not taking my top off. <laughs> I'll take mine yeah. off if you'll take yours off. <laughs> no, you know, it's one of my things that people like relax, relax people about this opinion I'm about to give. Even the gorgeous ones who are ripped and young and beautiful, put your clothes on. Okay. Every day, your story, your posts, you're showing us your routine, you're taking a gym selfie. Honey, we validate you. Fly, be free. You're making the rest of us look bad. Well, good for you. So you just had a birthday. I did. Our next guest is about to have a birthday. Uh, Tino, I am so thrilled that you're here, and thank you also for wearing a bandana today. Uh, where are you today, by the way? I'm in a very cold, autumnal London, UK, United Kingdom. Wow. So thank you. Yeah. My husband just got back from the UK. Oh, uh, did he? There, uh, I, unfortunately, had COVID. Oh. He just got back from a wedding, and I was not able to go because oh. I had COVID. Uh, so, what are you currently working on? Well, um, I'm, I've just shot a, a stills campaign uh, with a wonderful photographer by the name of Rankin, who is a very famous British photographer, and I'm really enjoying photography. Uh, <clears throat> the other night, I, my uh, another friend of mine who has an exhibition here in London, 
uh, the Taylor Wessing Photographic Prize, uh, took me as his, as his plus one to the inauguration of the exhibition. And his photographs and all the other photographs were amazing. So I don't know, something with photography is, is in the cards, but um, no, well, I mean, I'm still sort of looking forward to the um, UK tour of Joe and Ken, which we spoke about on, on our last meeting. And uh, what else? What else? Just self taping. Um, so I, I hope, fingers crossed, it'll be the same for UK that we don't, then in the new year, we won't have to do self tapes. I did one today. Well, I have to do one tomorrow, for Monday. I'm, it's driving me mad, but I, I'm, I'm sticking with it. I'm, I'm holding on. So I want to let everybody know, Leslie, Jamie, and uh, Tino have all been uh, on the show. Uh, it's all on demand on my channel, uh, so you can check those out. So uh, Jamie and I will fly to London. You'll do a photo shoot with both of us. <laughs> okay. You're on. What about me? Yeah, yeah. well, are, are you on the? Uh, are you going to be on the same exercise track that we're going to be Why on? Why not? So we're going to do it. <laughs> 30 days we're going to do this. And 30 minutes a day for 30 days. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yet. I, I do that. Yes. I, I do at least, I try to do at least 30 minutes. I have a wonderful park nearby, Hyde Park. I'm not sure what you guys have been to London. And it's literally a five minute walk from where I am. So I, I go for a sort of half an hour, 45 minute walk every day. It's glorious. I love it. Walking is my favorite uh, form of exercise. Mine too. And it's free. You don't have to pay expensive membership. Gyms mm -hmm. and it's that. hard in New York. People have forgotten how to walk. Uh -huh. COVID yeah. just completely people forgot how to walk in New York. Yeah. Well, I remember yeah. New York I went to dinner very... last night in Piermont, yeah. which is about half an hour from, you know, walking from where we are. We went to this nice little Irish pub. And uh, so we had dessert. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I'm walking home. So we went with our neighbor, Marilyn, and uh, she said, are you sure you're going to walk home? I walked home last night. <laughs> I said, <laughs> after this dessert, I'm walking home. Which I, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't believe that I made the decision to walk home, which I did. But it was a beautiful night last night. And it was See, you life. have to have your, your Fitbit or you have to have your, like, yes. Yes. you know, yes. you yes. count your steps. It's very satisfying. Yes. Well, the iPhone does that. It, it tracks your steps. Yep. Well, that's I'm good to know. I'm gonna do that. So, uh, Tino, I'm going to pull up the remaining question. I'm going to ask you this, and then I want to talk about a few things that are in the news. Um, the question that I'm going to ask you, it's what's something that you've done that you will never, ever do again? Whew, what have I done I won't do again? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is last night, it was about sort of... <laughs> 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, I got up and I had a big, big portion of bread and cheese. Wow. And I couldn't sleep for hours. My, my stomach was turning. <laughs> I said, I'm never going to be doing this again, eating at night. I probably will, but I'm going to try not to do that again. It, sleep and food, I, I, it's two things I'm very concerned about in the last couple of years. I've, I've, I've been getting up at all sorts of times during the night and my sleeping patterns of so yeah i guess i guess i won't do that again eat, eat too late and too heavy just before sleep that's my answer so i'm going to start with you tino on this topic because it's very much in the news right now uh elon musk uh just purchased uh twitter and first of all is this a big news story uh in uh the uk uh and the big question right now is whether or not he's going to allow the former you know who to come back onto this platform and there's a big thing as to whether or not people will come back on the platform there this question that i'm going to be asking is uh has several prongs to it number one is this a big news story in the uk i gotta be honest i i, I when you mentioned it earlier, before we came on, I Googled, you know, Twitter scandals or whatever, and I couldn't find anything. I, I personally haven't heard anything today, in the last couple of days or so, about this, this you know, proposal that, that he wants to bring bring on. I, 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 it's not a huge thing. No, we, we um, 
the, in the news here, it's been very big, you know, the new prime minister, we have a new prime minister, same party, conservative. Is it number three? Um, yeah, right, number exactly, three. In, in like 50 days or something ridiculous like that. And, um, and also I've been following Italy. Italy's got its first female prime minister. Right. She's oh, very God. far right wing though. Um, and um, she's, she's going to be trouble, I, I have a feeling. So mm. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, not uh, <laughs> I'm a little concerned. But mm. living in London, no, I haven't heard about this sort of huge Twitter thing with the, once he wants to bring the guy back. I mean, why would anybody mm. want him back on Twitter? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Well, his, you know, his belief is that there's a, there's a whole, a, there are a lot of reasons, but he believes that by taking him off originally, that it was a, a matter of censorship, um, that uh, by taking him off, which will bring me to you, Jamie. Uh, and, uh, and I always love your opinions on these things. things. Number one, do you think that it was censorship that he was taken off originally? Uh, number, uh, uh, and, uh, and all of our opinions, everyone are our own opinions. Uh, so do you believe that it was censorship? Uh, and number two, uh, do you think that he should be reinstated? Well, first of all, let me just say that I quit Twitter, quit the twit Twitter. years ago. I think it is, it is one of the root causes of uh, the unrest in our country uh, and, and globally, but it really is, it's a cesspool and it's a place where people can hide behind their avatars and be incredibly horrible to each other. And uh, I just don't like that energy. And I just was like, I, this is stressing me. It's like raising my heart rate. I just can't, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cause I can't help rising to the bait, you know? And uh, was it censorship? Uh, you know, here's the thing. When you've got a privately owned company uh, and you have the power to say who gets to play, I don't know that that's censorship. I think it's making a business choice. And I think that it was a very strong statement about the kind of content that you don't want on your thing. Uh, everyone knew that he who must not be named was going to start his own little, you know, cesspool of his own. So I'm not sure that it's a big deal. I think, I think the gesture of taking somebody off of Twitter has more impact than being on the Twitter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, should he come back? Who gives a, I don't care because I'm not there. Uh, I think it'll stir things up. Um, I, think, I think it's better to see the evil than to know that it's hidden. You know, it's a real Voldemort thing. You know, it's like he's hidden. He's away. Oh, he's not coming back. He's not coming back. Don't say his name. I'd rather it was out in the open. I re I'd rather the idioticness was out in the open because his followers are not persuadable in any direction. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's his 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 one superpower is is his power over the media. Um, what was the second part of that question? Uh, should he come I, back? I, should he come back? I don't care. I'm not in there. I think it's a terrible thing. I think Twitter's a terrible, terrible thing. It simplifies really complex arguments. It, it, it people shout out any kind of nuanced conversation about very serious issues. And what I've discovered since we've been out of the COVID bubble uh, and back into trying to interact with each other, it's fostered a, a kind of a, a open hostility and uh, 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 really kind of a, a, a nastiness in mm -hmm. people that it's like people are living their Twitter selves in real life. And that was inevitable, I think. I don't know. I don't think it's a force for good. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Leslie, are you on Twitter? I was a couple of years ago, but um, I'm not really on it anymore. Um, I never really followed it that much. I would announce a show here and there and so forth. That was it for those reasons. But would you be persuadable to be on a platform? I mean, if 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 someone, and I'm not talking specifically about uh, you know who, mm. but would you be persuadable to be on a platform uh, if you had a completely uh, different point of view from that person if they were so far against the grain of what you believe in? Uh, would they uh, would that have any bearing on whether or not you would be on that platform? 
Can you repeat that again, please? Yes. Well, for example, if let's say that he was on Facebook, would that have any bearing as to whether or not you would be on Facebook? Um. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I would just block him, and um, I would have nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you, Tino. Um, do you think that blocking makes a difference? I guess it's a personal choice, and it's it's guarding your privacy and and you know setting healthy boundaries. Yes, of course. If it's mm -hmm. somebody you don't align with in in the philosophy that they have, or the message they're giving to, to so on social media, um, then yes, I'm all for blocking, uh, you know. Uh, Jamie. I think we have far too much banishment, cancellation, ostracization. There's too much of it. It's mm -hmm. reflexive. It happens too often, too quickly. Yeah. Um, and there's no proportional response. I mean, well, we have no, we can't weigh one character thing or one nasty comment against another and, uh, and see the, the varying uh, degrees of egregiousness. Everything is, is, is smacked with a, with a, the big bat. And uh, I think, you, you know, think there is a, uh, I mean, let's talk about Kanye West for a moment. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, but, but, no, but seriously. <laughs> But Kanye West made a lot of controversial statements over the years. That's what he does. Exactly. That's what he He's does. He's a megalomaniac. He's a schmuck. Who yes. cares? But it wasn't until he made the anti-Semitic mm. uh, comments yeah. that his endorsement deals were canceled. I mean, he was yeah. making very, uh, you know, uh, incendiary comments uh, yeah. a year ago about uh, slavery and those yeah. companies did not let go of it. Yeah, that's an interesting conundrum there. That's an interesting contradiction. What, why is it that the Holocaust denying is the thing? Um, I saw who knows? I saw a very interesting uh, conversation the other night um, with, uh, oh, please, uh, she, uh, she's taken over uh, for uh, Rachel Maddow uh, during the week. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yes. And she had, um, oh, my God, I'm having, uh, uh, she had uh, Al Franken, and she had this uh, gentleman on, and I wish that I could remember his name. If anyone else saw it, please, please let me know what it was. But he made a very interesting comment, um, and this was, uh, this was an African-American man who said, and this is coming from the African-American gentleman that African-Americans cannot be racist. What? Well, it's a- But here we are, we are thing. four white people, you know, so it, you know, we can have any type of reaction that we want to have. But, you know, I remember that right after the George Floyd comment, um, Someone made a comment on uh, uh, Alex. Uh, well, Alex Wagner, yes, but I'm uh, trying to think of the gentleman who was on the show. If anyone knows who that was, and thank you, American Songbook Association Cabaret Scenes. Um, but I, um, I right after the George Floyd uh, situation, I someone made a comment, and I said, "I'm sorry." And his comment to me was that as a older white male, I did not have the right to weigh in on this conversation. And uh, my response uh, was that as a, I did not know what it was like uh, to walk in his shoes, mm -hmm. which is true. Um, mm -hmm. I do know what it's like to walk in a woman's shoes. No, that's a joke. <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> uh, no uh, not necessarily. That was a joke, uh, and I hope no one in women's that. shoes. Yeah, in women's shoes, uh, but no, that was a joke. That was a joke. cisgender oh. women <laughs> heel shoes. Yes, but that I don't know what it's like to walk in anyone else's shoes. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, right. But I, I can empathize with other people. Yeah. Um, I do have an open heart. 
Uh, and I, that's all I can offer. That's yep. all I can offer. I can offer my heart and I can offer my ears and right. I can offer to show up and be there for you. That's all I can offer. And if yep. that's not enough, I'm at a loss. Well, you know, it's for a much bigger conversation, um, but I'm, I'm in, in the process of, of, of tussling with some, some of these exact issues. And, you know, part of the anti-racist, uh, the social justice movement and the wokeism and all of that is one thing, but there's something called anti-racism. And part of what they are professing is that white folk are, their only use is to acknowledge their own inherent white supremacy and that they are part that they have had uh that w white people have had the opportunities they've had and whatever they've built because of a biased uh white dominated system uh and uh therefore you have to acknowledge that you are inherently racist and then you have to pro start doing things about it and providing more space for people of color and it sounds on the surface like a great thing but in certain situations it can be really very abusive and um and a lot of people think that it isn't a choice whether you do this work or not mm -hmm. uh I, I i think we're i i don't know that there's a way to go back and and dismantle all of the systems that are considered to be white and exclusionary i think we can increase it we can we can absolutely amplify people's access to to everything and and be more fair and more just and more uh you know but the but but that relitigating history and trying to dismantle all the systems and then try to rebuild them in a way that's equitable for everybody. I just don't know that that project is possible and it's creating an enormous amount of division and, and rage and anger and, and, and stress. You know, I am yeah. a huge fan of Bill Maher and, uh, and I agree wholeheartedly with him when he says all of us uh, are, you know, we all evolve as human beings, hopefully, <laughs> not uh, we can't speak for everybody on that issue uh, but our hope is that we all evolve um i know that there are things that i look at through different eyes and through different lens as i did 10 years ago um uh, there are things that i respond to differently that i did 10 years ago um circumstances change in our lives in terms of how we look and feel about certain things uh certain people that we learn different things about, we look at differently. Um, and so we can't put the same value system on something that was in place 25, 30 years ago. I mean, it's yeah. interesting watching movies now. Um, you know, I, I am watching, <laughs> I'm obsessed with American Horror Story. I don't know if oh. any of you are watching. Are you watching it? I haven't watched the new season, but I hear it's really kind of creepy good. Yeah. It is cre It is the creepiest show. It's Danny like Club Life, 90s gay, like 80s. Club Life, isn't it? 80s. Oh, 80s. 80s. And, I don't remember the 80s. So. Neither do I. Well, ah, ah. Know, Leslie, I yeah. can rest assured that this club scene, you did not live. Oh, good. But I came, <laughs> well, you know me, so. Yes, but uh, but this is the gay club scene. I oh, came okay. to New York in 1979, and shortly after I arrived in New York, Cruising opened, and Ugh. there was a big controversy about that film, which I have, to this day, I have never seen that movie. Oh, it's horrific. It's, mm -hmm. it's horrific. But those yeah. themes are part of this new scene. And it's cover. It's it's. There are aspects of the AIDS crisis. There mm. are aspects of I lived through uh, the last call killer. Uh, one of my best friends, as you know, Leslie, uh, was a victim of the last call killer. Uh, mm. So I lived through that scene, and so. But that whole scene, and then I look at, you know, uh, these things that were going on of you know you know i you walking with a friend 
uh, at three o'clock in the morning through Central Park, which I did, you know, <laughs> and, and, then, and then watching this movie and going, was I crazy or something? Yes. Like yes. Yes. <laughs> I saw um, I saw an incredible film this afternoon. Um, it's called The Triangle of Sadness. It came out today in the UK. I'm not sure if it's out there already, but boy, was it intense. I came out of the theater. I was like, what was that? You know? Mm. Um, yeah, it was really What's it about? Fun. Oh, it's about a shipwreck. Um, this really expensive yacht, and um, there's all sort of different characters, and they get shipwrecked, and they have to survive. It's um, it was, I wasn't sure whether to grab my seat or just leave the theater because I, I felt so, you know. Oof. Oh, it was just really intense. Mm. Do you guys like Guillermo del Toro? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, there's a new series out uh, that he just put on. I just saw it last night. Something about a cabinet. And oh, oh uh, yes, I know about this. It's so fantastic. What's that thing? What is this? What do you want to hear? Let me get this up. Bye. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, getting back to that topic that you that you brought up, Richard, about character, we live in a time of I, I call I call uh, the people who 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 walk around trying to virtue shame people and virtue virtue signal each other the pick a little talk a little ladies, you know. <laughs> yes. It's like the old temperance movement of these pious, moral, high ground people who just get into your business and and tell you what's wrong with you and how you need to straighten up and fly right and whatever it is and or banish you from the island. And I got to say, you know, I don't know if you've seen this thing about Martin Luther King that came out, this report about the, this FBI dossier uh, detailing yeah. his sexual uh, 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 libertiness. And he was apparently a serial adulterer and he got into some pretty kinky shit. Uh, but also, we also know that the FBI was trying to like railroad him as a communist yeah. and all this shit. So I'm not sure how believable it is, but it's interesting. Um, I'm friends with a guy named John McWhorter and I don't know if you know John, but uh, he's kind of a major figure now because he wrote a book called Woke Racism. And he is a African-American scholar and linguist and Columbia professor. And he wrote a book pushing back against the woke anti-racist movement. And he's quite a brilliant man. And I follow him and he does a podcast that's on YouTube with uh, another academic named uh, Glenn Lowry. And they were commenting on the Martin Luther King thing. And there were comments down below. And I, I wrote a comment and I said, you know, it's a good thing nobody people can't see into our dark corners of secrecy and the things we've all gotten up to. And Shakespeare said uh, in Hamlet, he said, uh, treat every man according to his dessert and who shall escape whipping. Uh, and somebody commented, pushed back at me, typical 2022, pick a little, talk a little, said, oh, so character isn't supposed to matter. The content of your character doesn't matter. I was like, we're going to toss out Martin Luther King's teachings because he messed around? Are you kidding me? Who is sainted? Who? Who? No and one. who are you? No. We're going to toss. Exactly. No. And, and I said, anybody who becomes that major, a global figure, not post his assassination before, anybody who wants that stage has a massive ego. And men with massive egos are surrounded by attractive people who want to have a piece of that. And they need that validation. They, yeah, I, I don't know, but who cares? I mean, I just don't- I love what Judy Garland once said. She said every time she was looking through a keyhole, there was always someone looking back at her. And, yeah. you know, and it's true. I mean, I mean, we can spend our lives, when Danny and I, you know, got married, um, we I were, was there. I know, but we were, we were almost, we were one of the first 100 couples, as Leslie knows, Leslie was our uh, witness. We were one of the uh, first 100 couples to get married in the state of New York. And we, especially here in Rockland County, were like the 100, this very funny thing happened. Um, <laughs> A, a, you know, a friend of ours, uh, you know, uh, 
posted, you know, she uh, called me up before we had even announced and posted in the Piermont newsletter that we were getting married. Uh, and then uh, I said, well, we haven't announced that we were getting married. Then she did a retraction. And then I said, well, we didn't say we weren't getting married. And she posted, well, they may be getting married. And it went back and forth. And it's like, are they or are they not getting married? And then we were on the local news and we were in the newspaper and everybody, it was like this funny, funny thing. But Channel 12 News came to our house and they did a story on Danny and me. And I said, you know, we, we lead a very full life. I don't think on any given night that our neighbors are sitting around thinking, it's like, you know, what is the king doing tonight from Camelot to quote a <laughs> comedy song? Uh, you know, uh, I don't think people are sitting around going, I wonder what Richard and Danny are doing tonight. Uh, if people are leading full lives, I don't think they have the time to sit around thinking about the private lives of other people. But they do. But they and do. And they want to get in there and they want to mess with you. Hateful people do. Hateful people. Yes, yes, hateful people. I don't, yes. I, don't, I don't have time for any of that stuff. The governor All of that South time. Carolina wants to overturn, my Ooh. home state wants to overturn same-sex marriage. We knew and, it was coming. You know, and uh, but more than 50% of people polled, whether you believe it in polls or not, in the state of South Carolina want to overturn it. And, uh, you know, and you may go, well, that's not going to happen. I will tell you and could happen. give you a little history lesson, everybody who's watching. Uh, I was born February 11th, 1961 uh, in South Carolina. April 11th, 1961, uh, on the state Capitol building in South Carolina, the Confederate flag was put above the Capitol building. It was placed there by Strom Thurmond. Uh, it oh. was not. It was put there uh, as a sign of uh, segregation. Mm -hmm. That's why the Confederate flag hung over, and it was placed there the year I was born, two months after I was born, and it was there until uh, the church shooting uh, mm -hmm. when uh, Nikki Haley. One of the few things that she did that I stand behind went in and fought to get it taken down. Uh, people in South Carolina still believe that the Confederate flag uh, is should be declared the state flag. It's a sign of divisiveness. Um, you know, this country is so divided. And, yeah. uh, you know, and you may think that and, and I'm telling you right now, uh, and I began the show with this, and we're playing the show with it as well. Um, we are 11 days away. I'm petrified. I am so petrified, uh, and especially here in the state of New York. I, I think, think there's going to be a tidal wave, a tidal wave of women, because the idea of taking choice away from women, forget about it. So, yeah. um, and they're saying there's going to be an unprecedented showing up of Zoomers this election. I saw a uh, a story that said, you know, 40% of the Zoomers that they uh, interviewed said they're definitely voting. Um, they've got a they've got a stake in it as well. And um, yeah, it is worth being scared about. It is. It is. Yeah, I'm a little scared about it, definitely. But um, I always try and take a positive type of outlook on things um, and not yeah. get pulled down with all this. As Joe, as Joe Biden's Biden, speech, I can't take it. Uh, Tino, has the Biden I, administration been, been, I mean, I haven't really been following American politics so much in the last couple of years, but has Biden, you know, I was so happy when him and Harris were uh, elected because it was a it was it was a huge relief. I think I just yeah. signed a huge, ah, you know, he was right. out, he was out, he was out of office, mm -hmm. and uh, I was so happy for them. Yeah, but um, but um, 
We're in an, in a difficult time, I think, globally with the inflation yeah. and the economy yeah. and and the gas thing and the oh, Ukraine and everything's yeah. very unstable. And I think that people want to point a lot of fingers at Biden, but the fact is, he's kept us from going off the edge. You know, oh, he, he really has. He but has. I, you know, our former uh, governor Pataki. Uh, I'm not uh, Pataki. Um, uh, Cuomo. Oh, God, Cuomo. I, uh, no. Andrew Cuomo. No, no. Uh, I'm having uh, senior moments. Uh, no, a couple of years ago, um, made a comment the other night that a few years ago, um, when the crime rate was so bad in New York, it was bad primarily because of crack cocaine that was really rampant. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But right now, it is so bad because unfortunately, uh, opioids, and we have a Fentanyl. huge mental yes, and the kids are getting it, and uh, you know, and people are acting out uh, yeah. in a rage, and it's not just New York; it's all over the country. Uh, and uh, we haven't come back from COVID. People have not fully processed what happened to us all. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. And yeah. a lot of decisions were made and movements were created and a lot of camps were formed that were highly like in this incubator of stress and anxiety and, and, and privation. And I just think we are, we're still twisted. You feel it on the streets of New York. You walk around. And you know, I want to assure you though, that not all of America is completely twisted and angry. And I'm not life. saying completely twisted. I'm just saying no. we're still I mean, sort we're, of healing. We still have sane people here. <laughs> but there is, I will say, you know, there is something good about being twisted sometimes. I, oh, am, proud, I am proud to be twisted. <laughs> That's and, my uh, superpower. <laughs> my we're going to do a giveaway and generosity, uh, generosity. You know what uh, Anne Frank said? She said, no one ever got poor from giving. That's right. That's that right. That was beautiful. So thank Vicki Bell. Vicky. Let me tell you all, Vicki Bell is from my hometown. Doug Bell was my best friend in high school. Oh. And Vicki is Doug's wife. So, Vicky, thank you for being Vicky. here. Vicky, send me a private message, and why don't you and Doug and I do a FaceTime call later tonight? I would love to see both of you. You know how to get in touch with me, and we'll. Uh, I know you're not going to be in New York, but I'm going to. Uh, I've got something for both of you. I think you'll enjoy it. At least I hope you do. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Vicky, for being here. You made my day. I love you both. Um, so I want to say my closing remarks, and then I'm going to leave the screen, and then I'm going to turn it over to you, Leslie, uh, and then you'll pick who you would like to follow you, and okay. then that person will pick the final person. And don't worry about how to end the show. As soon as you say goodbye, the final credits will roll, and I will end the show. Uh, generosity. Uh, we all can be generous. Uh, not only in terms of what we give out in the world, but with our time uh, and the way we interact with other people. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, and this is a message that I love to give every Friday. Uh, we, everybody on this planet, we all want the same thing, and that's acknowledgement. We want to be acknowledged, especially those of us who are in the profession that we are in. And there are so many posts that I see go on social media, whether it be on Twitter, and I do use Twitter, and I use it for promotional purposes only. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, try not to share anything um, of a negative nature. I'm guilty sometimes of political stuff. I try to stay away from that. Uh, but I want to get away from that uh, as much as possible because it doesn't elevate any of us. Um, when you see a post uh, from anyone in this business uh, that's going to elevate somebody, uh, if it's about someone's show, um, even if it's a show that you're not going to be able to go to, uh, hit the like button, hit the share button, leave a comment. It takes very little effort to do so. Um, if everyone did that, that's going to make that person feel that they are being seen. I mean, I have, I can post something 
I'm sure that James and Leslie and Tino, you can all agree with this. And it will sit there for hours and nobody mm. responds. <laughs> I can put, oh my God, I lost a button. And 500 people will respond. Well, did you lose it in the living room? Did you drop it? <laughs> Side, you know, maybe you know, maybe uh, maybe Danny picked it up. Maybe you know, maybe uh, Benny grabbed it and ran outside with it. I mean, it's amazing what people choose to respond to yeah, on yeah. social media. I mean, if people would just take the time to respond to things that are important, it could change the way we all interact with each other. So take the time to do that. Like, comment, share. And if it's not going to hit the hide button, hit the delete button, and stop it in its tracks. I end every show by telling everyone to go out and do something nice for somebody else without expecting anything in return. Go to your Facebook friends list and reach out to the eighth name that pops up and reach out with a phone call. Not an email message, not a text message, not a private inbox message, a phone call. And let that person know what they mean to you. Um, go and find out if if you're able to go to one of these shows that we've talked about today. Uh, find out if that person's available to join you and go. Uh, you know, I'm going to reach out to the eighth person and see if you can join me to go to Leslie's show on Sunday. And maybe oh, we'll do that. So we'll do that. So that's you know, my wish for everybody. As my dear friend, Sean Moniker always says, we're all in this together, but we're not in the same boat. You never mm -hmm. know what someone else is going through right now. Um, I have someone that's going to be on my show on Monday. And I've been doing research uh, on her, and I'm gonna share this story that's gonna be part of the show on Monday. Um, her husband at 47 was walking in the parking lot and he stepped on a nail and they rushed him to the hospital. He got so infected that within four weeks he was gone. Oh my God. And she has two, I mean, you know, a 20 year old and a 16 year old. Um, but now this woman at 46 is a widow and, but her book is about resilience going on and everything. Um, we're reminded this week Leslie Jordan, I, I, I mean, talk about the randomness of life. Yeah. I mean, none of us, yeah. uh, my friend, Susan L. Schulman, um, I just heard the circumstances around her passing and it blows my mind that I had no idea what she was going through. Pick up the phone and call a friend tonight, that eighth friend on your list and let them know what they mean to you. Don't let this just be lip service on my end. Um, and uh, I always say, as Sean Moniker says, we're all in this together, but we're not in the same boat. If you're going to go out in a boat, make sure you bring a skipper along. So I'm going to the screen. And Leslie, it's all yours. Thank oh you, Jamie. Thank you, Tino. And Leslie, thank you all for being here. And everybody, uh, I want to thank Jamie and Tino for wearing the bandanas today. Oh, uh, I had one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you as well. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. <laughs> that's not a bad day. Huh? Leslie, oh, it's sorry. all yours. <laughs> I want to thank you so much, Richard. I had a wonderful, wonderful time. And Jamie and Tino, it was so lovely to meet you. Um, I just think um, that we should all lead with love. That's the way I think our lives should be. And I, and I love... I know it's hard to do in this time, but I think if we keep reminding ourselves to, to lead with love. And I love that quote of Mother Teresa. Uh, if we have, um, what the heck? Oh my gosh, what is it now? Um, if we have no peace, we've forgotten that we belong to each other. Mm. And it's so true. If we have no peace, we've forgotten we belong to each other. So we may have different political uh, outlooks on life, but I think we have to keep reminding ourselves we're one team, the human yeah. being team. We got to stay together. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Jamie and Tino, it was really a pleasure. And I wish you all the very best. I hope to see you very soon, Jamie. Yes, and me Tino, too. Break a leg on Sunday. Uh, pardon me? Break a leg on Sunday. Well, You're doing thank your show. Thank you so much. Your shows sound really terrific, too. Thank
thank you. I was excited to hear about you're doing Alberta Hunter material because I, oh, I saw her perform in Boston when she was like 100 years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And oh, she was God. amazing. I, I, I One of my favorite songs of hers that I, you know, if I ever did lip sync and I don't do lip sync, I use my own. Is yeah. what? But uh, um, um, now who ever said a good man is hard to find? Oh, handyman. Positively, yeah. absolutely. Show sure was black. Yeah. You do? I do. Oh, oh it's. Oh, my God. That's one of my favorite ones naughty. I do. And this show I'm doing two-fisted, double-jointed, rough and ready man. <laughs> I know it well. <laughs> I know. I know it well. Anyway, she was she was a pioneer. She was like Bessie Smith, pioneer. She, she was so fantastic, and um, I don't know to think that she went back to showbiz. She left it for for many years, and she went back when she was eighty four. Right, she did that movie. She did the movie. Also. Yeah, she took a leave. Anyway, well, you know, it's never too late. No, I know. As Richard was saying, you just never know. A, a life is so crazy. Just kiss each day, you know, yeah. and, and be kind. So now That's what amazing. am I, am I going now? How do, what do I You're just, passing it off. I'm passing to it someone. off to you, yeah. Jamie. To me? Oh. Yes. Well, thank you, Leslie. It was a pleasure to meet you. And I, I, I keep, you. keep making good music and, and leading with love. I love that. Uh, I wish I were in London. You know, one of my dearest friends lives in London and we we talked today. She was going through some some tough times recently and she keeps begging me to go to London, London, London. And I would well, love to go. London, come on over. We'll, we'll, oh, I'd we'll love that. Coffee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've been trying to get there. It's just, you know, I would love to go back. I haven't been to London. I was in London right after Princess Diana passed away. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Like, like immediately 1997, after. right? Yeah, and that's the last time I was there, which is tragic, really yeah. tragic, because uh, I'm such an Anglophile, like all good Northeastern Jewish boys. And I haven't been back to the States since 1995. You're that's kidding. Right. Yeah. Well, you come to mine, I'll come to yours. and Cool. You know. Deal. <laughs> uh, I want to thank Richard, you know, thinking of me, yeah. you know, he's such a thoughtful man and you know, thinking of me on my birthday this year. And uh, I encourage everyone to come and see Goldie DeVere do Sweet Beginning with a five-piece band at the Laurie Beachman Theater on November 6th and 7th. And Sounds see Becca Kid, well, kill it at Don't Tell Mama on November 8th, Election Day uh, at 7 p.m. I'm so grateful to get to do creative work and to meet new people. And and I, I have to say to Richard, thank you for your generosity and for the invitation because... You should always say yes. When you're asked, you're invited, say yes, if you can. It's a pleasure to meet you, Tina. You get the last word. Likewise, Jamie. Thank you. Peace. And you. Peace to you as well. And um, like Harvey Feistein says, uh, say yes and then see what happens. If you're open, rather, you don't have to keep up. You just have to keep open, you know, and... Um, Life has wonderful things in, 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 in store for you if you're open to new possibilities. And I want to thank you so much, Richard, for inviting me on again. It was such a, a delight to, to speak with you guys tonight. It's, it's made my day. So thanks again, and have a wonderful rest of the day, wherever you are. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.